and we're in. We're in. Dude, I'm here. I'm not canceled. I'm not, I have not been canceled. We are more than halfway through 2020, and your boy has not been canceled. Things look good for your boy. Things look good for your boy. That's what everybody says right before they get canceled, I think. How many cancellations have we seen this year so far? So many. So many cancellations, dude. Cancel culture is like, it's fun um, because it, when it works, because it cancel, you, you got to cancel the bad, the bad ones, right? The bad ones got to go. Uh, but it's also really entertaining for people who haven't done what the bad ones have done. It's, so <laughs> it's just, it's, it's crazy to see. Whatever. All right, we'll get into it. Uh, but before we do, um, I have a kind of a semi-sponsor, I guess, Four Sigmatic Coffee. It's delicious. It's made with mushrooms. It's half the caffeine, not psychedelic mushrooms. I'm sorry. Um, it's half the caffeine as a normal cup of coffee, but it's got a bunch of adaptogens and different types of mushrooms that have been infused into the coffee. So it helps you think. It gives you energy. It keeps you stable and level-headed, and it doesn't give you all the crazy jitters. That's what it does for me. And I'm not a huge coffee drinker, but when I do drink coffee, I drink I drink uh, Four Sigmatic. What am I, the most fucking interesting coffee drinker in the world? Um, so if you want to get some, you should go to forcingmatic.com, use the discount code Brent, B-R-E-N-T, and you'll get a discount and it's delicious and go try it. Okay. I'm not canceled, dude. I have not been canceled, but boy, have so many other people been canceled. Wow. (laughs) It's a lot. We could make a board game with how many people that have been canceled. Um, if you guys saw, I put out a couple new videos in the past week. Uh, one was Gen Z versus Millennials, which I still regret. Uh, I'm just not a huge fan of that video, but I'm happy that a lot of people liked it. Uh, and then another one was uh, one that I did with my buddy Stevie Emerson. It was it was a Wolf of Wall Street parody. Um, Stevie does a lot of uh, parodies of, of the Wolf of Wall Street movie, but like through the lens of, of bro life, like bro culture kind of. So he's done ones that's like uh, the Wolf of Wall Street but it's it's for going through a breakup or the Wolf of Wall Street, but for when your girlfriend cheats on you. And that's the one that I did with him. And it was dope, man. If you guys haven't seen it, go to Stevie Emerson's YouTube, go to his Instagram and uh, and check it out. We, we spent, we did three different FaceTime sessions, uh, like two, two to three hours on each one, trying to nail the dialogue and, and the pacing. And it was his concept. He brought it to me and wanted me to play the role and help him write it. And I was super stoked. And it came out great, dude. Stevie's dope. I, he does dope work. I like people that do good work, man. And Stevie, he's he's a committed dude and uh, knows what he's doing. So that was fun. We tried to mimic the 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 all the little details, the subtleties of the of that scene. Um and it was really fun, dude. It was it was a fun time. So go watch that and then watch the Gen Z versus Millennial video that I did, I guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of doing, of making stuff that like doesn't really require effort. You know what? If that makes sense. Like I like, I knew when I had that idea, I was like, okay, if I don't do this, someone else will. How can I make it funny enough for me to enjoy doing it? And the way that I did that was with the boomer at the end playing Fleetwood Mac. Spoiler alert. Um... And also shout out to my mom who raised me on Fleetwood Mac. And so I made it like I made it the best I did, the best I could. And I made it how um, I thought I would like it. And it came out fine. And it got you know, a couple million views. And that's cool. And that's fine. And uh, so go watch that. But it, 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 dude, the motivation for that for that video was when I saw all those comments of Gen Z kids like hating on millennials. There's so much hate. And they're so specific with how they hate on millennials and I laughed but it was like a hurt it was like a painful laugh when I saw that there's there's like a, a viral um comment section from TikTok that started floating around online and all these Gen Z kids are like one of them said like uh I I, I didn't put it in the video because it wasn't my line but it was so funny one of the comments was like millennials are all like what Harry Potter house are you in and it's like you still live in a three-bedroom apartment and ask your mom for money. You're worried about the wrong kind of house. When you're like, why are you worried about a Harry Potter house if you can't even afford a house? <laughs> dude, that's so mean. That's so mean, dude. We were never that mean. When I was growing up, we would say, we would call each other names, but we never like hate, and we called like our parents old. But I don't remember ever hating, like, I don't even know what the generation above millennials is. What is that, X? 
or Zoomer. Zoomer is Z, is Gen Z, I think. Gen X, Gen Y, I have no idea. I just don't know. And when I was growing up, we never made fun of the next older generation. We we're too busy making fun of each other. But Gen Z just has it out for us, dude. That comment section was was ripping us apart, dude. It was hurt. It hurt. It was painful, bro. It was painful. So I tried to take that energy and put it in the video. Um, but one thing Gen Z did apparently they they uh, reserved a bunch of seats at the Donald Trump rally. I don't know if that's true or if that's I. I it's hard for me to believe anything that's in the news. So when I hear something that funny, I I don't really believe it. But it would be hilarious if that's actually what happened. If they reserved a ton of seats and um, people were turned away at the door because all these people reserved seats and it turned out to just be like K-pop fans and Gen Z people. That would be very funny. Uh, Also, that rally was so absurd, dude. They cheered for Trump when he drank a glass of water with with one hand because before he had to use two to drink it. And then he did it with one and the crowd erupted. And it's, dude, (laughs) if that's not the funniest moment you've ever seen from a president, I don't know what is. It's so absurd, dude, that that is the, the bar is so low that all you have to do, that's like if Joe Biden said a full coherent sentence at one of his rallies and the crowd erupted. That's the same as Donald Trump drinking a glass of water, dude. (laughs) <laughs> the bar is so low. Oh my God. What can we get a president, please? All right, whatever, dude. This isn't a political show. It doesn't matter. Um, but maybe we should get one of these K pop kids to be president, dude. Are you guys into K pop? K pop slaps, dude. K pop, K pop slap. K pop goes hard. Have you ever listened to some legit like K pop? You can listen to K pop. And if you don't start bouncing, you're not human. You have you have to bounce as soon as you start listening to K-pop, dude. K-pop is the most high energy, crazy bubblegum music. It's like what they would play in. Um, oh, you know what is it? It might not be in the movie, but it's what they would play in that movie. It, it was uh, Zoolander. Remember when they're trying to brainwash him? Oh no, they played. What was the song that they played? Um, oh, what was that song from Zoolander, dude? Jamie, pull that up. Pull up what song, dude. If I had a young Jamie, he would be pulling up the most ridiculous stuff. Relax from Limp Biscuit. Relax, just do it when you want. That's that's the one. Okay, but in today's day and age, if you're gonna brainwash someone, um, you're gonna play K-pop for them nonstop. I saw a little mini documentary about K-pop once. It kind of freaked me out because apparently K-pop stars uh, in Korea or where, wherever they are. I think that's what K stands for. Um, they, they're so sucked into that lifestyle. They like can't date anyone. This is just what I read. It might be different now. This was a couple years ago, but they, you, you, they weren't allowed to have boyfriends or girlfriends. Uh, they were on like s- strict sleeping and eating schedules, like down to the point where their light had to be out in their bedroom. And they lived in like a, a dormitory type building with all, all these other K-pop people. And they would go to like K-pop camp and learn how to be stars. Wild. Wild stuff. Would I do it? Yep, I would. I would do it. I would do all of that to be a K-pop star, one hundred percent, for like a couple months. I don't. I don't know if I could last more than a couple months um, being a K-pop star because I feel like their fans just want to eat them. Like they're fit, like people that love K-pop love K-pop so much that they would eat the K-pop stars. They would eat them. They would do a little cannibal. They would do a little cannibal. They would do a little bit of cannibal and they would eat the K-pop star if if they if they could. That's that's how much they love them. It's like how uh Eminem fans are so they're such strong Eminem fans. Like Eminem's fans are probably the strongest fans of any rapper I know. And maybe of any musician I know. And and I know because when I first did an impression of Eminem, I got death threats, okay? People were in like were, were DMing me on Instagram like, you ever make fun of the goat again, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to find out where you live, I'm going to kill you. And I would respond with a link to all of my stand-up dates so that they could see where I was going to be and when. Okay? Because your boy ain't scared of death. All right? Your boy not scared. Your boy isn't scared of death. Um, but <laughs> Dude, K-pop, I don't know. K- K-pop, would you guys be K-pop stars? 
would you be K-pop stars? That's the question. I think I would be. I think I would be a K-pop star. I would be a K-pop star. K-pop star. Um, was Gangnam Style K-pop? These are the serious questions, guys. These are the serious things going on. You know what a serious thing that's going on is uh, the Chris D'Elia stuff, dude. I, I think I would be remiss if I didn't at least touch on it. It's so it's wild. It was wild. I was surprised. I was surprised. Um, but I'm I'm usually surprised when I hear about stuff like that because I it's especially if, well yeah because it's just surprising. I don't know. That's just what it is to me. I don't know him. Uh, I don't know him. I've never performed with him. Uh, so I can't speak to who he is besides what I read. And you know what, dude? The main thing is like that he did a lot of shady stuff. But that's it. He did. He really did. And I, I'm in no position to say whether or not people should cancel him forever um, or he, sh- he should have his specials taken down. I don't, I don't know. That's not for me to decide or even comment on, I don't think. Um, what I think is... There are a lot of uh, different types of like stories coming out about him. Like some of the stories are objectively gross and disgusting, <clears throat> and show that he was being like a, a gross, douchey predator guy. And then other ones, I've read a couple that were like, um, when I was 22, Chris DM'd me and immediately asked if I wanted to hook up, and I really thought he was hot, so I, so we did. And then he started asking me for nudes, and it started getting weird, so I stopped talking to him. And, uh, like, the ones like that, I think, take away uh, weight from the ones where he was really, like, deviously being a dickhead. Does that make sense? It doesn't mean that that's, that he was in the right in the type of story that I just said, but it's like... It, it takes focus away from the people that were abused hardcore, um, which, according to a lot of the stories, happened, allegedly. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but like, it's, there's just there's a difference. Does that make sense? It doesn't take away from this one, but I think that, that stories where uh, the, the, the person uh, was like, yeah, we hooked up and I was 21, but he DM'd me when I was 19 and he wouldn't stop and... And so I did it because I thought he was cute and, and, you know, I have my own issues. I read that in one of the stories, uh, which doesn't excuse any type of dickhead behavior. It does not. But at the same time, I think it's important to draw a line um, somewhere or do or not. Or is it not important? I have no idea. I'm having a conversation with myself right now. I have no idea. But I do. I see, just see so much about him being a dickhead. Uh, I haven't seen any proof of like him acting on someone knowing that they were under eighteen. I haven't seen any of that. As soon as that comes out, if it does, he's done forever. That's like Kevin Spacey bad. That's real bad. You can't do that if someone's under eighteen because it's not legal, and therefore it's not chill. Okay. So you don't do that. So we'll see. I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot out there. Um, there's a lot of stories about it, and there are plenty corroborating stories and 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 witnesses and people. Plenty that are so bad that I would not be surprised if he either never makes a comeback or doesn't for a very long time. Um, then again, where does this level with uh, Aziz and Louis? You know, uh, I don't know. That's for everybody, you all to decide. Think, but think about that. You know, remember the Aziz one. Remember what happened with Louis, and 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 did you get all the specific details for those? And we're still waiting for all the specific details of this, and then we'll have to see. You know, because Louis's still touring. He just put out a special, um, not on a platform, just I think on his own website. But he still has a massive fan base. Aziz still has a massive fan base, and uh, I I wonder. I personally have not seen anything that would make the Dalia stuff worse than either of those, but I have also not seen everything. So maybe there's some stuff that I haven't seen um, that would make it worse. I have no idea. I don't know. Again, conversation with myself, okay? I have no idea. So we'll see. Uh, it, 
it's also like when when this when this type of thing happens when when somebody gets canceled or or people like really act out against someone and they try to take away all the stuff that they've worked for and all the all the fame that they built and the and the the, the uh, uh, material that they've generated and put out to make people happy, whether they're an actor or a musician or a comedian. Is there a point, this is just a question, is there a point where we allow that person to recognize their mistakes and grow from them to re-enter their career and re-enter society a better person who can actually benefit the world more from being in it rather than being excluded from it. Is there a point where that happens? Is, is it a time thing? Is it based on their apology and their level of sincerity? Um, or, because it seems like so many people are so quick to just say, fuck that dude, he's gone forever, fuck him. Forever. But, but at what point do we say, okay, You fucked up big time, dude. So you're going to owe a lifetime of apologies. You're going to lose so many fans and so much money and so much of your audience and so much of your ability to be successful in the career path that you want. But you can still have a positive impact of the world in some type of a spotlight if you act with sincerity and authenticity and apologize and learn from your mistake and prove that you can grow from it. Where where does that happen? That's my question is where can that happen? And and maybe it's different for every person. I have no idea. But like here's an example, right? Let's say there's somebody who allegedly um, uh, raped someone, okay? A man who allegedly raped a woman, allegedly. And, and it, it goes to court, but it doesn't go to trial. He settles out of court. And he's hated by the entire world, right? He's hated by the world. Everywhere he goes, people yell at him and they absolutely hate him. Years go by, he has three daughters. Uh, the woman he was married to when the allegations happened stays with him, and they build uh, a, a foundation for kids. He starts you know, being heavily involved in women's sports and, and, and fighting for equality in women's sports. He, he goes on to raise three wonderful daughters and, and puts good things into the world. And do we now... Okay, so that's Kobe Bryant, Right? So he he did allegedly something very very bad when he was young. I forget how old. Early 20s, I think. And then for the next 20 years proved that he could grow from an alleged mistake, an alleged bad choice, an ale- a thing that was ale- it, I say alleged because it didn't go to court. It got settled. So I think you have to say alleged. Again, I don't know. I'm a fucking idiot, okay? So he he if if someone like that can grow from from a situation like that to 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 show that they can put good things out into the world isn't that an example that more people can do that and if so where do we say okay we're going to let you come back and we need to see that you've learned from your mistake and you can grow from it and how does how does that person show i don't know i don't know i don't know dude I have no idea. I don't know, but I, uh, I'm, I, I was not born with the gene that makes me want to DM underage girls or expose myself or say racist things on a podcast, which a lot of people have done, and they've gotten some pretty cool opportunities, even though they've done those things. And it's like, hey, Hollywood, sup, dude? Never pulled my dick out. All right, never been, never been walking through a restaurant. And just went, here it is. Check it out. Okay? Let me, let me get an audition. <laughs> you know? And I think it's partly because I've never, I've, I just, um, some people, I don't know, are messed up enough to do that. I don't know where that comes from. But it's also because if I did any of those things, my biggest fear wouldn't be, Dude, if I did if I did what Delia did, what Louie did, or what um, that one dude did who was racist on a podcast and then got fired, if I did any of those things, my biggest fear would not even be the the clapback online or the Twitter justice or the cancel culture or all that shit. My biggest fear 
If I was caught doing any of those things, which I don't do, but if my biggest fear, if I was, we're in a hypothetical world here right now, okay? Hypothetical metaphysical world, all right? My biggest fear would be that my mom would beat my ass, dude. My mom would beat the fucking shit out of me, okay? Worse than any of those other consequences would be my mother taking a rolling pin to my head. That's what would happen, is my mom would kick the shit out of me. And so, I will never do those things. First and foremost, because they're wrong. Secondly, because my mom would shove a wooden spoon up my ass and then kick me across the street. She would. That's what she'd do. She'd physically harm me. Love you, mom. So just like, don't do that. It's also so fucking easy to be nice, man. I think I've said this before. It's so easy to just not be an asshole. It's so easy. We've all had bad moments. I, I've probably been a dick to people for sure. In a moment of, in a, in a heated moment, yeah. In a frustrated moment, yeah. But I've, it's ne- I've never, like it's so easy to just not be a dickhead. And somehow the dickheads get so many opportunities. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Maybe that's going away now. Maybe it's going away. But maybe not. You know, maybe maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm going to keep trying to not be a dickhead and see what happens. And see what happens. And maybe maybe it'll work. Maybe not being a dickhead will work. Maybe I'll be the first one who's not a dickhead to uh, to have a cool career. We'll see. Mushroom coffee, dude. We'll see. We'll see. We will see. Just uh, just don't be a dick. I don't know. I don't know. What else? What else is happening? What else is happening in in the world, dude? Um, got a show in August that hasn't been canceled yet in New York. If New York is still standing. It's so funny how nobody believes in coronavirus anymore. Like people just stra- <laughs> people just straight up don't believe it. The bars are all open. There's no distancing. People aren't wearing masks at the bars. No, nobody believes it anymore. My buddy was like, "Yeah, dude, it doesn't even exist outside of California." There's there's so much conflicting science, dude. I don't even want to touch on the science because the science is all over the place. Get it together, science. Need to get that shit together, science. Science needs to figure it out. Science needs to figure it out. Um, They're tearing down all the statues now everywhere. Statues are getting canceled. Which kind of makes sense. I mean, the people defending... Like, if, if a guy did something great for the country, but also owned slaves, then I think the owning slaves part heavily outweighs whatever he did that was good for the country because he owned people. And if you own people, you shouldn't have a statue in public. Put it in a museum so that kids can learn about it when they go on field trips. Otherwise, you don't need it. You don't, we don't need to have a slave owner in the middle of the park. Of course, it's going to make people mad. Take that down. Put it somewhere else. Um, oh, and then there was an article. What was that article about Melania's prenup. <laughs> Did you guys see that? Dude, Melania, oh man. I I don't know if I've ever actually heard her voice. Does she s- speak? Yeah. She's got to have a voice. She must speak. I'll go find her talking after this. I only say that cuz I can't picture what she sounds like. Um but she uh dude, I f- I kind of What do you think is going through her head? Do you think do you think she's 100% on board? Do you think Melania is 100% in? Or do you think she's like, oh boy. Oh boy. I should not have left where I was born or wherever. I should not have married Donald Trump. Um, I, I bet, dude, I think Melania is going to write a book in like 20 years talking about all this stuff talking about everything and it's going to be one of the greatest books of all time because it's going to detail how you know her and uh donald trump 
got married and then she moved to the White House and she would overhear talks about uh, foreign trade, but people were getting really frustrated because Donald Trump wouldn't stop eating gummy bears during the meeting and and that's how World War Three happened. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to read this. This is the article that I read last time. Um, God, I got allergies too. It's not the Rona. I tested negative again. Uh yeah, dude. She what did she do? Oh, because they have a kid, right? Baron. She had a prenup renegotiation to take care of Baron. Um, I don't know, man. There's so much weird shit going on. I need to s- stay off the Reddit conspiracy theory thing. But there's so much, dude. There's so much, dude. There's so much, bro. <sighs> there's so much, dude. You know? Um, what was a good one that I just saw? Oh, there was a... Oh, the... How is Pizzagate still floating around? I don't know. I don't know. I shot a video about conspiracy theories. I should put that out pretty soon. Um, But yeah, man. Oh, I got another video coming out. Uh, It's it's going to be fun. It's going to be a bunch of impressions. A bunch of new ones, too. So if you've seen... Most of mine, uh, there's going to be a couple new ones sprinkled in there for you. Just for you. <laughs> yeah. Just for you, dude. Yeah, man. Some new ones. Some old ones and some new ones. There will be some old ones. There will also be some new ones. Um, hey, Arnold is amazing, and you guys should watch it again. If you haven't seen it recently, go watch it. Oh, that was I just watched an episode of The Fairly Odd Parents. Yo. Whoever made The Fairly Odd Parents was 100% on PCP. You cannot make a show like The Fairly Odd Parents without being on PCP. I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible to create The Fairly Odd Parents without it PCP. How do you do it? How do you come up with everything about that show unless you have PCP in your body? How do you do it? Hint, you can't. You can't. You can't. That show is so insane. The cartoons that I grew up with, I don't think would ever be able to be be made today. Cat dog? A cat and a dog fused together? Where does the poop go? Huh? Where does it go? Where do they poop? How do they poop? There's no hole in the middle. So where do they poop from? Because they eat all the time. The dog will eat. The cat will lick its arm and the dog will get a hairball. Where... Oh, it's so, it's like disturbing to think about. It's a weird human centipede ass show. Don't watch that movie. Woo! That's, that one's bonkers, dude. Human centipede is nuts. Cat dog was nut. Cat dog was crazy. Fairly Odd Parents was crazy. Invader Zim was absolutely insane, but really fun. I really liked Invader Zim. What else? I would say the top five old school cartoons. Uh, Recess is for sure in there. Pepper Ann is probably like top 10. I wouldn't put her in my top five. Um, Recess for sure. Rugrats, obviously. Um, What else? Uh, We're talking old school. And since SpongeBob is still on, I guess old school SpongeBob can count. So that has to go in the top five. What else was there? Pinky and the Brain. Oh, I Real Monsters. Dude, that was my shit. I Real Monsters was my absolute shit. I loved that show. I Real Monsters. Pinky and the Brain was fine. Dexter's Lab was cool. Um, Dexter's Lab was cool. What was, what was the other one? Dexter's Lab, Recess. What was the Saturday morning one? Was Captain Underpants turned into a TV show or was that just a book? Those books were great. See, Gen Z doesn't know, dude. Gen Z, y'all don't know, dude. Y'all don't know that we had the most fire cartoons in the universe when we were growing up. And you guys just have TikTok. You you guys just watch, like, girls dancing. Gross. Get the hell out of here, dude. Go away. Watching girls dancing. We We watched Tommy Pickles getting into mischief, dude. That's what we watched. We don't need no TikTok. We need Tommy Pickles getting into, getting into mischief with Phil and Lil. Remember them? 
That'd be a fun sh- uh, song to make something about um, throwback cartoons. That'd be cool. Uh, what else, man? I don't really have much, dude. Past week, I've just been shooting this video and um, watching the news. There's just too much news, dude. There's just too much. There's way too much news, and there's just too much news. And I want there to be less news. I I miss when there was less news, you know. And I, I there's just I don't see much good <laughs> from the news. I don't see any good, really. Um. So, whatever. I don't know. I, I'm gonna bail. I'm gonna stop now. Yeah. I feel good. That's a cool 30 minutes. I appreciate you listening, dude. This has been a good time. Go go pick up some Four Sigmatic coffee. Let me know how you like it. They have a bunch of other drinks on there too, like cacao and mushroom drinks for uh, nighttime. It's kind of like a cacao hot chocolate type thing. It's very high vibe. Um, and some other ones that you can take before a workout or whatever. And it's all shroomy and good. So, okay, that's it, man. Go, go uh, you know... Say you say what's up to a friend. Go say hi to a friend that you haven't talked to in a long time, and make sure they haven't been canceled because they be canceling folks out here, all right? And I'll be here next week unless I get canceled for something, which I don't think I will because I don't have anything that could really cancel me. I don't think. I guess I should double check, but I think I'm good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm okay. Um, all right. Well, I love you guys so much. I really do. Uh, I wish you all the peace and love in the world. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right? Okay. Bye-bye.